this is Pat Love with Pat's Two Cents. Reading Psalms 37, starting at verse 23 through 29. The key scripture God led me to that he actually said in my head was Psalms 23, which I'm about to read now. But I felt that he wanted me to read through 29. So different people need to hear everything that's in here. Listen. The steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord, and he delighteth in his way. Though he fall, he shall not be utterly cast down, for the Lord upholdeth him with his hand. I have been young, and now <clears throat> am old. Yet have I not seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed begging bread. He is ever merciful and lendeth, and his seed is blessed. Depart from evil, and do good, and dwell forevermore. For the Lord loveth judgment, and forsaketh not his saints. They are preserved forever, but the seed of the wicked shall be cut off. The righteous shall inherit the land and dwell therein forever. Mm, mm, mm. Thank you, Lord, for that blessed word. Now listen, anoint, Father. <laughs> listen, a lot of times when life starts to happen and it seems like we're on a downward spiral in the center of God's will, but things seem to be working against us. Okay? We're, we're giving. We are uh, serving. We're living a holy life with all of our might, with everything in us. We're fighting and contending for the faith. We're doing battle with the demons of darkness. We even battle in our own flesh. And sometimes it seems like no matter what, life starts to work against us. Now, sometimes it seems like a siege or an attack from the enemy. And remember one thing, Satan can't do anything God doesn't give him permission to do. So, there's another scripture we have to keep in mind when these things happen. All things work together for the good. For them that love God and are called according to his purpose. Alright. Now, we're not dealing with the best laid plans of mice and men. No, we're dealing with the plan of God for your life. You work on staying in the middle of that plan. Staying right there in that lane. And God will work on getting you everywhere he has planned for you. Even some things you never thought of for yourself. Now, okay, let's get back to the hard times. Yeah, to the nightmare. I'm going to share a few things to let you see how God orders our steps. When it, it seems like everything is helter-skelter. And we have no clue how we're supposed to get from point A to point B. Or from point A to point Z. And it seems like we're going through all these obstacles and roadblocks. and oh, Alright. I'm going to give you a little quick example. This is real quickie. I'm going to give you a lot of them. So I hope this doesn't go too long. I'm going to try to keep it condensed. This morning, for example, I was visiting a church because I got up too late to go to mine. So I said, well, I want to go. So I'll go to a church I visited about a month ago. And I had to read the map to get there, you know, Google's map quest. But I wasn't sure of the street. I remember I always thought of Mona Lisa. So I said, it's Mona or Mono something. <laughs> and I, I looked for that. And I said, okay, Lord, I don't want to have to look for it. Would you put a car right in front of me that's going where I'm going? And when they turn, I know I'm supposed to turn. <laughs> I asked it. Yes, I did. I'm driving down a long street, 
and cars go in and cars go out and one car is trying to pull in and I let him go in in front of me and we're just all going down the road and what happens? We get to the street, I'm not sure if it's it and the guy is making a right turn and I, I remembered my prayer and I said, well, let me look. And right when I got up to the to where I could see it, that was it. And he was going to the same service I was going to. God placed him right in front of me, just like I asked. Now, how could I couldn't do that? God did. Okay. <laughs> and one of the things of righteousness, now this is not bragging at all, because unsaved people are very considerate. I'm just saying it pays to be considerate because because of the fact that I let that car go in front of me, that ended up being the car that God sent to be my blessing. <laughs> okay, now, moving on down the road. When I was in Altadena, my husband was alive. We were living in my old rusty house and it was about 950 square feet, just rounded down, okay. And here we are, I'm at a hair salon, finance are go, finances are going down, they're dwindling quickly. And I'm wondering, well, what's going on? I'm not living in sin, what's happening? I'm not realizing that the economy is crashing. And most of you know what that was like, because you were there too. So now the economy's crashing, money's getting tight, and I've got to go back to another salon in order to stay local, um, in order to build back up what I've lost, which I never did. So while this is happening, now we're getting to the point where we can't pay house payments. This thing, this nightmare, went on for two and a half years. The salon owner was so kind. God gave me favor with this man. He was so kind. He was a Christian too. That he allowed me to pay him commission instead of the booth rent that I would have had to pay every single week. He allowed me to pay commission and a smaller commission than what he would normally ask for in order for me to have enough money to take home and do something with. I am telling you, God gave me so much favor. Now, here's the other thing that happened. We had started a church, okay? We started a church going on Sunday. I start examining the scriptures because I had a few Seventh-day Adventist pay, uh, customers that came to get their hair done. And I started asking them questions because we're brothers and sisters in Christ. You know, we share, get information, and, you know, the more knowledge you get, the better. So I find out that there are certain things that happened in history where man changed the day from Sunday, from Saturday to Sunday, and Sunday's named after the sun, God. It's a pagan uh, worship day. So I'm not hung up on legalism. Trust me, I'm not. I, I love the grace God gives. I, don't, I, I choose not to be bound. Galatians chapter 5, verse 1. All right, now, so then I sat there, and after I got the information, we have been doing the church for a year and a half. And I, I, I mentioned it to my husband, we prayed about it, and then we talked about it at church. And I said, you know what I found out, you guys? There are precious promises that are only associated with observing the Sabbath going to church on Saturday. I'm not looking at the legalism. I'm looking at the promises because my money is funny and I needed some help. So I said, Lord, if we start going to church on Saturday, would that bring more blessings? And he started leading me to more scripture that let me see the connection with certain blessings strictly with observing the Sabbath. So after that, that's what we started doing. The church agreed. They were all for it. We went for it. wasn't a big deal. It wasn't a big church, you know. But they liked the idea of having a Sunday to go visit other churches. I did too. 
Okay, so that's what we did. From that point on, things still got worse, but every step of the way I saw God's intervention, 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 more than I had ever seen in my life walking with God. I started walking with the Lord 1981, September 6, 1981. And I, the struggle was a way of life. But when I got to this point where I started going to church on Saturday, I started noticing some things beginning to transition. And I was like, wow, I'm still struggling. But every time I think I'm at the, boom, there's a blessing. Boom, there's a rescue. Boom. So next thing that happens, our church, I mean, it got really ugly. The church started to dwindle and dwindle instead of growing. And I'm like, well, Lord, why, why? And one of my friends told me they always felt like it was a temporary assignment because they said, notice who came to your church. People who didn't go to church. People who didn't like church. You said God told you to start an unchurch. Don't have it in a church building, have it in a secular building to gather up those who want to walk with him, but who don't want the organized religion and all the traditional nonsense, the pomp and circumstance that goes with that. So because I held it at a park, in a building, they came. Now, check it out. When everything started to dwindle down, and we couldn't even afford to stay in that building. Then I started having church in my salon, in a room. We set up a room for our services. All right. Now, that worked for a little while, but then even that started to dwindle. And it got to the point where my husband and I said, we're just going to have to go to another church. It's just you and me some of these uh, Saturdays. So we got to the point, we folded the church, we let everybody know, and we searched around and found a church in Monrovia, a Seventh-day Adventist church. We went to that church for about a year, maybe about a year, wasn't that long. And all of a sudden, and here is the trip, God freed me. I know some of y'all will have arguments about it, so I'll just say God freed me from something that most Christians think we have to do. He freed me from it. So then it was a matter of doing what came to my heart rather than keeping numbers and all of that. So we'll leave it at that. And because I don't want to get into a debate, honestly. So the next thing that happened, I found out we got to the point God instructed me through a run of events, which I won't go into now. I said it in other videos to move to another city over an hour away over well over an hour away i never would have thought to move there i didn't know anybody there i had a brother but there was nobody else you know i go to church he doesn't so who am i going to hang with right so sure enough we follow god's lead steps of a righteous man ordered by the lord stick with me this is a testimony i'm showing you how helter skelter will lead you right where you're supposed to be and here we are, we short sailed the house, we're out of there with $3,000 allowance to move, which we needed to move, but we also were short the $3,500 of the 5000 it took for closing costs. And when we got the house, we only got it because God told me, turn on your computer, I got something for you. And the house was 1,408 two-story house in a senior gated pristine community. We only paid 68.9. Now, ridiculously low mortgage in California. So here we are. You know, we get everything done, we get all the paperwork, and now we're short $3,500. Oh Lord. You told us to do this. You know, what do we do now? So I was sharing with one of the people on the phone to pray for us because we really needed God to intervene here. And we only had another week or so before it was going to be too late. I think it was going to be about 10 days and everything would be down the toilet. And they said, 
call your elder. My elder? Huh? I don't know who my elder is. What are you talking about? And they told me who my elder was. Gave me the guy's phone number. I call him and his wife. He c contacts, he listens to our story. He contacts the pastor. He tells me there'll be a check waiting for you on Thursday. I go Thursday, but because I don't want to play with people's money, I said, now, before I take this, I need to tell you I won't be able to pay you back until two months after we paid all this stuff for the utilities, and then we'll start paying in payments. That's the only, only, only way we're going to be able to do it. And you know what my pastor said? She said, this isn't a lending institution. We're helping you. It's a gift. $3,500. I mean, the miracles, the financial miracles, the blessings, the navigation. God was navigating every step of the way. So now we get the house. Just in time, the our house short sales, we have the allowance to move. So he gives us 30 days. Now we got another $3,000 for the moving expenses. We're moving. We're here. Now, my husband never got the hot tub he always wanted. I never got the swimming pool I always wanted in the backyard. However, when we got here, there was a hot tub waiting for him and a swimming pool waiting for me. Right there at the clubhouse in the community, the senior gated community. Now, I say all that to say, provision, just crazy. Uh, they, they, they send me a notice saying, we have to trim our tree down or they're going to fine us. And we're like, oh, no, because we're so used to problems in the other city. We're like, oh, no, not here, too. So we pray about it. And what happens? One of the guys at a church we chose to go to up here offers to help us. And he only charged us $100 for a $1,500 tree trim job where tree guys were up with the chainsaws cutting limbs all the way halfway up the tree. $100. We were able to tip at that. <laughs> now, my point, I'm telling you, God, when he has something for you, it's for you. Before all that drama took place, my husband and I were in an apartment. And when I was reading the Jabez prayer, I was applying it to myself and to me and Milton. And I felt God's presence. And I, I couldn't see his face, of course, but I saw a facial expression. And it was like, ooh, beaming smile. You have no what I have for you, that was the impression I got. So strong. I was glowing the rest of the day. So what happens? Within a few months, the Lord tells me it's time to buy the new car that he showed me 15 years ago before they ever made it. So we're running around, test driving five or six different kind of cars. I forgot all about that dream. And I'm just trying to find the best deal. But check it out. The steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. We test drove about five to seven cars. One car, no matter where I went, no matter where I parked my roadmaster, I could see the car. One car kept overlapping it in my mind. I would go to bed, close my eyes, boom, the car. The car went and followed me everywhere I went. It was undeniable proof that God wanted me to get that one. That's what we did. And I was never late on one payment. Never late. After a year and a half, I threw it on to the mortgage. Well, the mortgage, the house foreclosed. <laughs> so all the rest of the car payments were locked up in that. And no more car payment. I'm telling you, so many things came together like a woven tapestry. When, listen, 
<laughs> when God has something for you, it is for you. When God pronounces blessing over your life, do everything in your power to stay in the center of his will so that when things do go wrong and they seem to be going helter-skelter on you, you don't have to hit the panic button because you know if you're in the center of God's will, it obligates him to fulfill his end of the covenant. You're in a covenant with him. Part of the covenant that we added to our litany was the fact that we chose to observe the Sabbath. Now, I'm not legalistic, so you're not going to hear me browbeat you with that. But God's day is, is Saturday. And if God ever allows me or orders me to start a church again up here, we're going to worship on Saturday and other days, of course, because, you know, Jesus is Lord of the Sabbath. That's a seven, you know, 24 seven experience. He is our Sabbath. But to observe the Sabbath brings more and more blessing. All right. So being a widow, living a holy life, doing this all the time, working on this YouTube ministry. I asked God to let me do full-time ministry because when I read the book of Haggai and I saw that when we apply ourselves to God, he applies himself to us. Okay, Lord, I take care of your business. That means you take care of mine. Cool. I'm good with that. I love doing God's work. So it's not something like, oh God, I got to do this. No, I love doing this. It's gratifying, it's fulfilling. When you water others, you water yourself. So I'm not going to drag this out, but I just want to encourage you with my testimony of how things can go helter-skelter. It's like with God, you can throw a bunch of things up in the air and all the puzzles fall down on the ground right in their place. And there's the clear picture when it's all said and done and all the dust has settled. God bless you. As you trust in the Lord and wait patiently for him.